Hey guys, so Vlad has done another update for the Red MC. Uh, we have PS3 file support, which is fantastic. But we also have total or full control um, options now, which I believe is a $5 add-on. And it lets you do crazy things up to like the U uh, the uh, ultimate base roster, the UBR, that we saw last year for 2K12. Now, unfortunately, the files aren't as manipulative as they were last year yet. This may be updated to let us do crazier things in the future, but the basic functionality is still there. So I'm going to show you guys how this works. Let's go ahead and load up um, a base roster. I'm just going to work on a copy here. So here's my roster base, copy paste, and we'll open up this one. So we have a couple extra new buttons here and a new menu, full control menu. And as you can see here, we have clone, delete, undelete, move down, move up, and move to. This is some fancy stuff that lets us do some amazing things. For instance, let's say you know we, we're going to do something like the ultimate base roster, and we need to have 3,000 players in the file. What you can do is select all of this right here, go to full control and clone, and as you see, we now have 3,000 slots to put players in the game. Now remember, these players won't show up properly until you update the Teams tab and actually put them on Teams. Now let's see if this works or not. Range check error. What this means is that I have created too many players and that the roster file cannot handle that many players. Now it's difficult because you can delete stuff to uh, create room for these things. So let me just load that up again. Z current, copy. Now, let's say I want to make room for those 3,000 players. I can go through, and if this isn't going to be an association roster, I can go through here, select all, all but one, and press delete. I can go to the next schedule, select all but the first one, because you want to make sure you still have one in here, and press delete. Select them all. Go ahead and press delete. And let's say we aren't going to have any custom players with uh, generic head shapes. Go ahead and select all of these and delete. As you'll see right here, we have this little marked X here. Now if you made a mistake and you don't want to delete these, you can select some and press undelete and it will you know, clear this check. But as it stands right now, once I save this file and reload it, all of these place things will be uh, deleted. So let's go ahead and press save. We'll close it out. Go ahead and open it again. And now if we go check our schedules, you can see that it's all been cleared out, and same with head shapes. Now, this is where the balancing act that there's no real good way to uh, check for this, to really counter, to make sure you're, you know, there, to know how much of the file size you have left in it. So we can go ahead and press clone again, and let's see, can we double it yet? Range check error. So we still can't do it, so we have to close it up, we can open it up again. And if we want to, I mean, we can keep going through these uh, different tabs and delete things that the game's not going to use. Extra jerseys, the head shapes is only for people with uh, created faces or generic faces. Um, I believe you can get rid of the player stats, uh, team stats I think you can get rid of. It depends and it's all going to take, um, I guess, just some finesse and testing to see what you can and cannot delete. And therefore, unless you're really planning to completely expand the roster like the ultimate base roster did it's going to take a, some you know uh, trial and error to see what does and doesn't work now that is the more advanced aspect of this the much more practical aspect of this is dealing with the move commands so as I said before let's say we want to turn the Hornets to the Pelicans and I did a tutorial on this and now it's outdated <laughs> So we have the Pelicans here, and when we show it up in the game, this won't be alphabetical. The way teams are shown in the game is by this order. 76ers are first, then Bobcats and Bucks, and blah, 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 and it goes all the way down to the bottom and then right back up to the top. I want the Pelicans to show up in the proper place. So if I take the Pelicans and I want them to be in between the Pacers and the Pistons to be alphabetical order, all I can do is click this button right here. Another way I could have done that, let's bring it back up, is, let's put it back to where it was. I can go to full control and move to, and I want it to be ID 19. 19. Press OK. It moves down, everything else shifts up. So now we can easily uh, move these teams around without having to do control click and then control paste. Um, 
Another fun thing you do, you can do you can select multiple of them and do move commands. Um, it, it, this this is more for organize to better organize your uh, stuff. Now let's see the cool thing about this. Um, let's take a look at the 76ers. So you see the 76ers here. The first point guard is ID zero. Which we go over here, we see it's Drew Holiday. Let's say for whatever reason I want to move him down below Jason Richardson. Vlad was nice enough to update all the references. So now when I go back to teams, as we can see, ID1 is now the point guard, and ID0 is a shooting guard, which is Jay Rich and Holiday switching places. That happened automatically by moving. So <laughs> without this, we could have broken a lot of things in someone's roster. And thankfully, Vlad you know, made that proper and happy. Another place where this uh, is helpful is with jerseys. Same as the Teams tab, the jerseys that are on top will always be the default uniform if they're the home or the away. So if you unlocked all of these uh, um, practice uniforms up here that show up first, if you unlock them for normal use by changing the jersey type, you can then move these down to the bottom of the file by selecting all of them and uh, pressing go to or pressing down the air down arrow a bunch of times, all the way down to the bottom of the file so they show up as the last uniform selected. If Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. The best thing ever about this, the best thing that everyone on the PS3, on the Xbox 360, and PC users can do from this, I can't be the only one that absolutely hates that rooftop court. Even though I love blacktop, I can't stand that rooftop court. And that's this blacktop one. It's ID 73 here. The best thing about this is that if you just highlight it, just click it anywhere, full control, delete, and then save it, the game will automatically force you to choose, or will automatically choose between the Rucker Park Day Court and the Rucker Park Night Court. And not only is it the Rucker Park Night Court, it gets rid of that orange tint that I don't like, and it gives you the accurate shadows and everything else. Another great use for this for me as a street modder is for some reason when we can change these shadow shadow modes and rucker types and all this stuff for some reason we cannot get the nighttime shadows to show up on the court. Um, if you have a team manually choose Rucker Park Night as their uh, arena ID, the nighttime shadows will show up. But for whatever reason, you can't get them to show up if you just input these values into another stadium. So, to get around this and to have an accurate uh, you know, street mod with proper lighting on the night courts and all this fun stuff, I can just go to Rucker Park Night, full control, clone, full control, clone, as many times as I want. And then down here at the bottom, here they all are all showing up. And we can call this, oh god, I have Rec Center, whoops, index out of bounds. I am working on the beta. Uh, this is fixed in the real version. But I can rename these to whatever I want, and I can change the model ID so that um, it, the thing uses uh, my custom courts I created that are nighttime, and it just makes it that much easier to have accurate shadows and just another use that you can use with these uh, different tools. Now, while that error was something that's known and fixed in the you know the full version that's getting released to you guys. Um, it is important to know that this stuff can mess up your roster file. So backups are extremely important. As you saw when I loaded this up, I made a copy right away. I'm not messing with my base roster that I have. Um, and also, if you have the feature, you can turn on auto backup. And I mean, this is the stuff that makes it a lot more powerful. Um, now, like I said, as it stands right now, it's not as powerful as it was last year. We can't create 3,000 players and still have the roster file stay intact, we have to maintain a file size, unfortunately. So while Ultimate Base Roster on 2K12 can have 300 teams, um, I think we max out at around 175, which is still insane, and that's still fantastic to have 175 teams or whatever it is in the game, but it's just not going to be that far fetched as the UBR right now. Hopefully, and hopefully soon, I will be able to report, report back with a new tutorial saying that we can do whatever the hell we want with this roster file. But that depends on what Vlad's able to do with customizing it and compressing things and all that fun stuff. So, that's basically it. If you guys need additional help, feel free to comment below. I'm more than willing to try to help you guys to the best I can. Um, and I hope you learned something. I hope this helps. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.